Welcome, I'm Kelly Kearney with Starry Constellation Magazine, and with me today is actress, comedian, and everyone's favorite, I guess, mansion manager, uh, <laughs> Josephina from the Max hit show, Hacks. Thanks so much for joining me today, Rose of Dew. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Oh, it's wonderful. This show is so fantastic. You're on season three. It's about to drop, I uh, guess, this week on Thursday. This show is such a hit with streaming fans, with TV fans, and it came at the right time, I felt like, because it became an instant fan critic as well, uh, a critically acclaimed um, fan favorite. When you read the pilot script, was there something that jumped out at you that you thought, yeah, this is what I want to join in? Yes, I love that question. I just said to the creators, Lucia Agnello, Paul Downs, and Jen Statsky, that it was, I think, one of my favorite pilots I've ever read. And I've been doing this for over 30 years. And I just really felt like the way they captured the way the generations speak to each other. Mm -hmm. And just, I've you know always been a big comedy fan and being a, a alum of Second City Chicago, I just loved the way the the person of Deborah Vance's age communicated what she thought was funny with someone, Hannah Einbinder's character, Ava's age. And, and the kinds of things that change and the kinds of things that stayed the same. And the relationship with the two of them was so special. And I also thought, you know, I didn't see my character as just, just a, a housekeeper or a maid. I really saw how she was really a confidant of Deborah's. And I think we get to see that in little bits and pieces throughout the seasons, but it was so special and it moved along so quickly. I could just picture the whole world of it. And then when they, when I saw it made, it exceeded my expectations from the written page. I have to say as a fan, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of the show. I can't believe I get to be on it. That's the best part, right? When you're on the show and you're a huge fan of it. Um, was there a moment when you were filming the first season where you kind of, sat back and thought, oh yeah, this is going to be a hit? Or did the, the instant success kind of surprise you, take you off guard? I felt like I was so proud of us for getting through that first season because it was COVID yeah. and we were testing and we were, you know, sending people home because they, they had it. And, you know, the crew is so amazing. They, I never saw the bottoms of their faces the whole first, really the first two seasons. I was like, I only saw people's eyes. So it was just, I think I think we were so proud of ourselves for just getting through it that it was so rewarding that it was received so well. But yeah, it, I mean, anytime you get to share the screen or the set with Jean Smart, it felt like she's just amazing. She's just so incredible to watch and and be with, and so fun to just work with. That I thought oh. this is going to be something special. It did feel like something special. I have to say. It did. So, yeah. you know, you've done three seasons now and the character dynamics, in my opinion, they really molded together in season two and three. And they hit their stride. The actors hit their stride. I thought the characters really fit well into the stories. Every character just fits perfectly. Um, did you go into this project creating your own little backstory for Josephina? Because in season one, we didn't see too much of her, but then in season two, we really started to get deeper into the importance of her in Deborah's life. Yes, I think I I was really thinking they go back a very long way. And yeah. I was talking to the creators about that. Just little things that clued me into that are you don't often see a house manager sit on the bed of her employer and paw right. through clothing. You know, they gave me little clues that made me feel like, wait a minute, she's known her for a very long time. And just the idea of like always worrying about her is she getting enough to eat? Is she getting enough to sleep? And you'll see that a little bit in season three. I'm just so excited for people to see where it's headed because it's so satisfying in many ways. And it's like, it seems like it's been so long since we did season two, you know, between the strike and everything else. So it's just, it's going to be great. And I, as a fan, I told them that when I'm not in the episode, I'm not in all of them this season, even though I'm very blessed to be a series regular, I, I don't read the whole episode. I get them. And my friends who want to know what happens can't believe that. But I said, no, I want to enjoy it like a fan. So I know what I do, but there are episodes this season that I didn't, I didn't even read. So I'm going oh, to be wow. surprised like everybody else. Yeah. So you said you're not in every episode, but do we see more of her um, in, the, in the episodes that we do see? Do we see sort of more of who she is and how she interacts with uh with Deborah because Deborah sort of doesn't have Ava to kind of entertain right. her right now. 
I think that she, you'll be, you'll love what happens. I think maybe we don't see more of her, but what, what we do see is Josefina gives very key pieces of information to what's going to happen. Oh, very, I mean, even if it's one line, she gives, she gives pretty key, pretty key stuff as to where it's going to be headed and praying for a season four. I just think it needs to have a season four. So we can... Well, that's the funny thing about Josefina because she is sort of in the background of all the scenes because she is the house manager and she's really good at gossip because of yeah. that. That was one of my favorite little quirks about that character and how she Thank sort you. of knew everything yeah. about the people that came in the house and they would that's sit right. around and kind of gossip all the people yeah. that worked for Deborah. I love that. Um, Josefina, though, is like a gatekeeper for Deborah. Her, her emotional stability beyond just managing the house, making sure yeah. everyone's fed. Thanks. I mean, we saw her protecting the boss lady when she was getting some bad press and hiding the newspapers. Yeah. She also seems to be the only one immune from Deborah's volatility somewhat. Yeah. What has it been like working with Jean and building this on-screen relationship? You know, she's one of those people that right away I felt so comfortable with. And we're just from both from theater backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're you're trained on stage, there's this shortcut of language and sort of a mutual respect. And she's just just such a special person. And when she gets she gets into the character of Deborah Vance, it's so complete. I don't know. I just love I love what they created for us because I felt like we had an instant history. I don't know how else to describe it. You know, she's just she's just great. And a lot of fun to laugh with. I mean, I said to her the other day that it's like when they call second team to set the lights. We get to talking about just everything and then they'll go, okay, we're ready for first team. I'm every time I'm always like, no, not enough time to hang out with Jean. You know, oh. that's the fun thing. Yeah, it's really fun. And the whole cast is hilarious. Is there anyone specifically that makes everyone else in the scene break scene because they're so funny? Well, I mean, I love watching um, Carl who plays Marcus and we have a little fun short scene in season three and uh, it was hard. It's hard for me not to laugh when we stare at each other, but yeah, I just, it's just been great. And I think the get, the thing that I want people to understand that they're excited about, and I'm excited about it is the guest stars are so perfectly cast this season. There is one guest star that I think, well, people who are big Hacks fans will have seen it in the trailer, but to me is the most perfect casting I think I've ever seen in the last, you know, couple of decades. It's the most perfect oh casting for someone that we've only been hearing about that's what i'll say and you're oh. going to be delighted by it especially i'll give a hint hbo fans will be yes delighted. i think uh we'll get to those co-stars and those new additions um and a question but certainly hbo fans know exactly who you're talking about yes, and yes, they yes. are very excited myself Perfect. included i'm a big yes. fan um <laughs> <laughs> so shows dread the sophomore slump though i mean in season two everyone was kind of talking about is Hacks going to keep it going? You know, right. the energy. And of course, it just blew everyone's mind. Now we're on season three. Everyone's worried about, will the story stay fresh? Will the character dynamics and chemistry continue to work? And these new, you know, uh, uh, challenges in the story. So everyone was always talking about that. But this season, we heard that it's going to be spicier and sexier. So without spilling any sort of actual spoilers, what can fans look forward to with their main favorite characters, Ava and Deborah, and the other main cast and their sexy, spicy new addition to the to season three. I mean, you'll just have to wait and see. I just yeah. think that the trailer kind of hinted at a couple of things and it's very satisfying to watch uh, the new dynamic, I'll say, between Ava and Deborah. It's very mm -hmm. different than that first time she comes to the house and Ava really comes into her own in maturity. And I really think like people are gonna be loving it. Well, I know uh, there's going to be lots of uh, lots of scenes with Christina Hendricks. We'll get to those uh, new uh, new uh, additions to the cast, and uh, I know the fans are looking forward to that. You mentioned earlier your work for Chicago's Second City. Uh, this is I love that, and I just want to talk about that for a second. You know, you Second City spawned incredible comedians and actors. I mean, we've got Eugene Levy, Chris Farley, Amy Sedaris, Stephen Colbert. I, I mean, I could list forever. I could list forever. Um, as an actress comfortable with improv in comedy um, and working alongside stand-up pros like Hannah, working alongside Jean, is there any room for improv when filming Hacks or does everyone really stick to the script? 
You know, the writers are so good at throwing out alternate lines that what I like mm -hmm. to say is the improv training comes in handy because when you're thrown a line uh, for a take, let's say the third or fourth take, the way I think people with improv training can seamlessly incorporate that and not be like, wait, I need some time to memorize. Like, it's just, that's where it, it comes in handy. But they they think of all the funny stuff. I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I've, I've not improvised as Josefina, that, that's all them. And it's, and they will give me like five or six alternates that are all fantastic. So I just love it. I love it. It makes me laugh. I have to get my laugh out of the way first and then I compose myself and become <laughs> Josefina. So it's just really fun. One of the lines is in the trailer. That scene had several different jokes that we could have used for the trailer, but I love I love the one that they, they ended up with. Oh, that's great. You know, yeah. you mentioned a little bit earlier working with Gene and how comfortable you felt. We hear stories about how tight-knit this cast is. Obviously, everyone embraced Jean and the tragic loss of her husband. And then she, in turn, returned favors for example, uh, throwing a baby shower for cast member Poppy Lou. There was all these kind of stories that were coming out while you were in the off season waiting to go back to season three about just sort of this very uh, tight knit cast, very caring cast. Does it feel like a family to you? Does it feel different from other projects you've worked on? It really does feel like a family, which is impressive because we're not always all there on the same days. Like right. in season two, when they all went on the road, you know, Josefina was sort of back at the Vegas mansion. So they were really traveling and doing the scenes in the motor home and everything. Mm -hmm. And I still, when we get back together, it feels like, oh, these people, it almost feels like, are these people from a past life or something? I mean, I don't want to get too <laughs> crazy into that, but, but it really is great. And there's been two babies. I mean, Lucia and Paul had their baby and there was a beautiful baby shower Jean threw for them and Poppy's baby. And we really um, embrace each other. I think people are all very, the the through line is everyone is very sweet. You know how you're with people and you just feel like in their core is a sweetness and a delight in being there and working. And everyone's of course, very grateful to be working in this weird time that we were having, you know? Yeah. But they, they've they cast, and that comes from the top down. I mean, they're just such, you know, I just remember the first audition was on Zoom. We we couldn't meet each other in person. So it right. was just really, I admire the the fact that they, I think of them as energy readers. We call them JPL, the creators. And they, they really, I, I feel like picked people that they would want to hang with. So we all got along because it's, you know, we, we do feel like a family. I feel like uh, those behind the scenes stories that we heard about in this close knit kind of family uh, group, it really does transcend on camera because everyone, and as I said before in season two, it really felt like a, a perfect oil machine of all working parts in the perfect way. And you only get that when you're comfortable with each other, when you trust your scene partner, when you know where the scene is gonna go. And you felt that in season two. And I'm oh, assuming it just grows from there in season three. I feel like it does. And that's such a nice um, observation that that you are, it's such a nice compliment what you're saying. And I, I do I do think that's why it's resonated so much with audiences, you know, and, and everyone kind of knows someone like either Deborah or Ava, you know, in your life. And, and I just said, I just think they've done a beautiful job of, of the generations and even the relationship between um, Deborah and her daughter. You know, and now you'll get to see some other family members. That's all I'll say. Mm. And it's really just the best scene. That's the scene that I think is killer. I will say for my taste is 307. Oh, okay. Yeah. Although right, I well. haven't seen all of them. So I shouldn't really say that because I'm <laughs> sure they're all fantastic. But it was a, incredible to watch for me as an actor. Oh. Really. Yeah. Well, you know, we had, you had just mentioned, uh, uh, you know, the fans and they really love the the show and this family dynamic. And one of the things that interested me when as soon as I started tweeting about the show, you know, watching it, the audience early on really gravitated towards uh, a full fandom experience. I mean, they're making T-shirts, they're making stickers, they're making fan fiction, they're making fan art, they're filling the Internet with it. They are, especially the younger generation are really, really involved and excited about this show. You mentioned that it does attract so many different kinds of people. So why do you think that is? Why do you think it's such a, a young people just really love it as much as older? Obviously, older people can relate yeah. to Deborah, sort of this um, aging person trying to hold on to what's familiar yes. to her while the world is changing. 
But the younger people, they love Gene. They love the show. I mean, to the point where they are just making so much art about it. What is that, that young people are just, that's my show. I love that. I love that. I think that Ava's character is so open. And I think it's like it hit the right time in the culture where our show is so inclusive and it's so, um, you know, LGBTQIA friendly and so much there's so much acceptance of people that people aren't put in a box of like, you know, this is a show about two people in love. It's like, it's constantly changing. And I think it, it, it really radiates the acceptance of the queer community. And I think I'm really proud of that. And I'm proud to be an ally because we have so many, you know, people in it that are members of that community. And I, and it's like, it just shows this world where we can all just, you know, stop, putting people in boxes and allow people to be sort of fluid. And, and I think it's, it's where the world is headed. It's reflecting the, the zeitgeist or the, you know, the culture. And I think that they've really hit the nail on the head with that. I also think uh, it also gives an opportunity for the older characters, like Jean's character, to grow. You yeah. know, start in a place where maybe they're unsure about that culture and then learning and growing and accepting and the younger generation is always looking for that my that's community is always looking for that and i think at least for me that was so appealing to see you know older characters kind of uh on the fly learning and growing and becoming more compassionate to people that are not yes. like them exactly and i think uh, you see that line in the trailer where sh she said they i thought they want to be called they now i thought everything you know and hannah's uh, character ava is always educating deborah and yes. and they learn from each other. And I think that's so fun, you know, to watch. Yeah, that's definitely um, uh, something that you can see them sharing. Obviously, Ava learns from Deborah also about what it means to be in this right. in this career, that's how right. you have to put yourself first in a lot of ways. Those are all important lessons for her as well. We have to get to the newcomers, though. There are some great newcomers. Obviously, we talked about Christina Hendricks and Christopher Lloyd from, um, mm -hmm. from Back to the Future and Taxi is going to be on. And fellow theater veteran Jason Smith Cameron from HBO Succession. Uh, were you looking forward to working or sharing scenes with any of these characters? And who would that be, Miss? Well, Peter? as a massive Succession <laughs> fan, I yes. mean, just like rabid Succession fan, I was thrilled to get to meet and work with Jay Smith because, you know, I think that's the most perfect casting, and that's the scene I'm talking about. I don't want to give too much away, but. I think that she and Jean together are, it's gold, really incredible. I look forward to that because I have to admit the fans of both Succession and Hacks, there's a lot of crossover yes. fans in that, that was fandom. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them were talking about, let's get, because Jay Smith Cameron, her name is Jean, let's get the two Jeans together one day, you know? And they were kind of pushing for that last year. And I saw that going through my Twitter, you know? Oh, oh you're so on top of all the news. I didn't know any of this. Like I did, uh, it's just, I just opened the, I think we had a Zoom um, table read. And you know, when all the little squares light up, that was, I was like, oh my gosh, look at the people, you know, it was exciting to see this is who we have this season, you know, because it was early on. I, I think I saw the little squares in the Zoom read before I saw it on the page. So that was exciting. And it was like, let me just take a moment as a fan. Okay, now let me compose myself and be <laughs> host. <of Vita. laughs> yes, of course. The fans were very excited about that because like I said, they really, uh, they were pushing for that over a year ago, long before. Wow, I, I do not even... know that. You have yeah. really been scooping me a couple of different times now. I was not aware that there was that much fan art and I was not aware of what you're saying right now. So it's fun for me to get to talk to you who obviously is so well, you know, versed on everything Hex that you're making me as a super fan even more excited about my season three. <laughs> well, I have, to, I have to say one of my favorite parts of the show is all the bantering, uh, you know, back and forth between the characters. Is there a moment in your character with Josefina that you loved, a, a bantering moment, a, a line, a, a scene that you did that was just fantastic. I well, I love that scene in the kitchen of the Los, uh, Los Angeles mansion when, yeah. you know, they, <laughs> they are, Marcus and Damien are both like, what are you gossiping? And I was like, what? Or Ava looks at me and is like, is it really necessary to say that or what? And I love my favorite line, I think so far has been like, what? They asked what was new. Like, I'm just giving what was new. They asked what was up, you know, she's so innocent. But um, yeah, I think that's one, that was one of my favorites. And uh, 
I think that it's really, I'm just hoping for a season four because I see where it could go. And, you know, I think we'll get a chance to do that. I'm just going to put it out there right now that we need it to keep going. I can't imagine that it's not going to go season four. It's such a fan favorite. It does great on Max. I'd, I'd imagine the stories are going to leave us wanting more okay. at the end, you know? Sure. So where would you like to see Josefina if we do a season four? I would like to see her doing more scenes with Deborah and maybe see how, um, maybe a flashback as to how it first came to pass that she worked in the mansion. I have some ideas about how I think it happened that I want to save, but I think that it would be really fun to see how did they become this close. And I think she's seen her do stand up when she first started. I mean, I think it, their relationship goes back a long way. And I think for, for me, I look at the relationship like um, maybe Deborah really got Josefina out of a bind and her loyalty came from that, whether it's something, I, I don't want to give it too much away because I really want it to happen, but, but I think it's, it's a long, long relationship more than just, she came to interview at the mansion and got the job. No, I think they started out as um, business associates. I love that idea because not yeah. only does it show you how far Josefina came, but it also possibly can give you an a, a little look into who Deborah was as a younger person That's and right. how much she has grown in that right. relationship between the two of them. I hope that happens. That sounds like yeah. a fascinating uh, idea and it could be hysterical. I'm sure it would be hysterical. Yeah. Um, you know, we cannot wrap this interview without mentioning Gilmore Girl, Girls, oh. how beloved Gypsy was to the um, the fans. What does it mean to you that so many fans still love it? And now you have all of these younger fans Amazing. binging, watching, and also making fan art and videos and everything as if it's just new. Amazing. It's so gratifying because honestly, while we were doing it, I was there, I think I was in maybe a total of 23 or 24 episodes over the course of the seven seasons. So this resurgence of, you know, when people started to stream it, and meeting people that say, this is my mom, this is my grandma, and now I'm watching it and they're like 12 years old. It's it's blowing my mind all the time. And getting to meet the fans. they're the I always say they're the nicest. Gilmore fans are the kindest, sweetest people. And they're very bright. Like Gilmore fans are very well read and they love, they know the show backwards and forwards. Like they'll mention episodes to me that surprise me that I'll, I have forgotten about, you know, and that's that's been really fun. It's just so exciting. And I and I get to meet people that will say, this show kept me company during a difficult time in my life. Or, you know, um, I met women on the strike line that were actually nurses that said to me, oh, you babysat my kids. When I had to go to work, I would turn on Gilmore Girls. And I thought, the show is just so, it's so much deeper than it was when I was doing it. I thought, well, this is a fun, cute little show. But I realized right. that it's people's comfort space. It's people's um, refuge. And, you know, they put it on to, to cheer themselves up, to keep them company, to get through health challenges. Beyond rewarding to be a part of something like that and be part of the world. I'm super, super proud of being in uh, a member of the, you know, a Star's Hollow inhabitant. And I really wish that for the, I believe it's the 25th anniversary coming mm -hmm. up soon, that there's something that we can do for the fans. I, I wish, Ooh. you know, I, I wish it could be a, a special, you know, holiday movie or something, you know, I, right. it's my dream that that has, that's unofficial, but <laughs> that's something <laughs> I would love to love to do. So uh, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. And I, just to get recognized as Gypsy, I'm shocked that people. Does that, does that happen? Did younger generation, up. you think they're yeah. they're looking and you think, oh, they know me from Hacks. And they're like, oh, Gilmore Girls, Gypsy. Does that happen? No, it's always it's always Gypsy or That's So Raven, the Disney mm. channel. I did, yeah, and I'm yeah, shocked. Yeah. They're amazing. So, other than maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, a holiday Gilmore Girls special. What's next for you, Rose? Are you have any projects on the horizon? Maybe even looking to going back on stage, maybe. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yes. I think I would like to, I'm, my husband is a very talented uh, animation artist hmm. and he has a site called Matt a Napkin and he draws a daily comic on a napkin. He was doing that for a while. We are putting together a show of the two of us. I got asked to do a production, um, a, a, a show that was about relationships and marriage. And I was a person who never, never wanted to get married. I just didn't understand it. And it's sort of like, I'm an anti, I'm sort of anti-couple, but love being in a couple. 
<laughs> so I think a stage show that incorporates his art and my story of how my parents met, fell in love and got married in three days. And oh. how when I met my husband, I knew after three days that this would probably be my life partner. That's so I think something like that. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's fascinating. I, it's going to take I, a I, while, but I think that's, that's what I'm passionate about. And I think something I want to work on. Oh yeah. I definitely fans would love to see that. And that's, that's fascinating. Three days with your parents, three days with you. That's, that's kind of a little bit, uh, a little yeah. strange, you know? well, I think it set me up for something. when you come from parents who met, fell in love and got married in three days, my dating life, I realized that if I didn't love, you know, think I was in love with the person after three days, I'd be like, well, I guess I better move on. You know, it was just like, it was funny. So funny. Yeah. You're like, listen, buddy, three, you got three days to impress me. Are you out of here? Right. Uh, so what would you like to say? This is the last question. What would you like to say to fans who have followed you from Gilmore Girls are really excited about that, really excited about PAX. You probably have wound up in a few fan art somewhere out there on the internet. Ooh. What would you like to say to those fans who just are really excited about this? Please tag me in your fan art. I would love to see it. I know that this year they made the most beautiful deck of cards. I hope they're selling them somewhere because oh. it's our actual PR team gifted me with a deck of playing cards where Mar Damien and Josefina are the clubs. The Jack Queen and King of Clubs, you know, Deborah and Ava are the hearts, the Queen of Hearts. I think Marcus and DJ's character are the diamonds and Paul and Meg, you know, Jimmy and Kayla are the uh, the spades. And it's just gorgeous. So I want the fans to be on lookout for that. But I want to thank everybody. I mean, it's so gratifying to have people that are saying, you know, I followed your career since Gypsy or since, you know, Senorita Rodriguez on That's So Raven and are now watching Hacks. I'll see things post that say, is that the Spanish teacher? You know, because mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm imitating a version of my mother who is, happens to be 96 years old and from the Dominican oh. Republic. And Josefina is loosely based on uh, a, a sort of nemesis of my mother's, who was also Dominican, and my mother kind of put together that that character. So it's just so rewarding, and I just want to say thank you to the people that have been following the shows, and I think they're going to be very delighted by season three. Well, I know. I already love it. I haven't even seen season three yet, but I already love it because I just right last night finished binge watching for the third time season two. Oh my gosh. And I'm just so ready for season three. I just really think it's such a well done show and there's not a lot of comedy shows that you can say, I like every single episode from beginning to end. It's like a perfect book each season. And uh, I feel that with that show. It just has something. It's got that little little spark, you know? And I hope it goes to season four. I hope you get a season five. Is what I Me hope. too. 